Even though I am 21 now. Hey. All right, we're gonna have uh, Pyramithra versus Rob. Now, and on FD to start. What are you kind of, what are you expecting from this matchup player-wise? Because it seems like you're from, wait, are you familiar with both these players or were you no. just making a these nuts joke? No, I was making the these nuts joke. Okay, never mind. You, you lose commentary. Get, get off my uh, hey man, hey man, you don't get to say that until you met Riz's cousin. All right. Anyway, getting to this match, we're seeing one of the. I feel like this is going to be a defining part of the set. Uh, ledge trapping Rob. Yeah. Oh, and he switches to Pyra. And Pyra is where it gets scary because any of these will kill at this point. Ugh. If that were not literally coast to coast, that would have killed. Oh, but. but, but oh, did no. That lock? Was there a reason that didn't lock? I'll clip it. I'm. Find the imposter. <laughs> That's what I hear the neutral BS from Mithra. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Is that elbow? Who screams that? It's Toad. It's Toad getting it's hit Toad? in Mario Are Kart we... 64. <laughs> it sounds like elbow too. Oh no, and here's those Mithra combos, getting that damage. Ugh. Yeah, this is more of just a... I can see... So normally I feel like Rob does like this stage, and that move is so silly. Normally Rob likes the stage, but I can definitely see why... Uh, okay. Neat. <laughs> that, that, that neat. Oh. And yep, Pyra's on deck now. This is looking scary. Oh no. The moment you're in disadvantage against Pyra, it's just terrifying. Oh. Because Pyra just needs that one tap. But at the same time, because he's now Pyra, but he's so much slower, <laughs> meaning that Rob can play the game he kind of wants to. Yeah, I think you realize that. Even though he's one tap away, what does it matter if you're never going to get that one tap? Ooh. And... The, all right. Foresight. Ooh. Very strong. And just able to go, no uh And then forward smash, punish the arm rotor for some reason. Oh. And oh my god, this damage is just climbing and climbing. It's gonna. Oh, oh no! Oh, the read on the air dodge! The imposter was found there. Oh, that might be death. Mm, yes. Oh. Well, um, still death. What, yeah. what, what are you doing, buddy? Yeah, come on, Mitt. Come on, you gotta. Oh, that was actually really nice there, seeing the, with the Phantom Footstool, to actually avoid getting hit by more of a string. And they're just, yeah, getting in. Pyron, oh. Here's where it's scary. If they're very bold, they could just go for that, but like dropping from ledge with it. Sort of like how some Incineroar players will do the Lariat. Oh, 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 wow, the neutraler killing right there. And I I can understand why he didn't want to be particularly bold. He had a really mm -hmm. big lead, and I do feel like going off stage unnecessarily was kind of how he would lose that game. Or at least yeah. that was one possible way to lose that game. And instead, it, we I don't think we saw... Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think we saw once uh, DM ledge trapping... And then he gets that situation turned around on him. There were times yeah. where it took it took you know Josh then a while, and he managed to get back to stage, or you know at least get a, gain a little bit of stage control. Uh, but it wasn't like a, aha, now your ledge trap you overextended, and now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. So it felt like he was pretty just. He felt DM just felt so comfortable at the ledge at, until yeah. he did that. <laughs> Exception anomalous. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, DM was just sort of just out neutral in Jonathan for the most part, you know? Yeah, I know. I, I was gonna, I was actually going to mention this when it happened. He, so he shielded the first hits of this roto arm and then rolls out of it. So yes. he triggers the foresight yes. and is just able to get there for the... That is, so that means that... It's a guarantee. If you rob, foresight. if you rob and you go for roto arm on a shielding Mithra, you're, you're getting forward smashed. Yes, yes, you're getting you will get forward in smashed. the direction that DM wants to send you in because you can roll either way. It seems exactly. So yeah, that seems like a very risky option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's sort of one of the strong things about foresight is that against a lot of multi hits, you could guarantee it. You can guarantee a foresight, which I don't think that was intended. I don't think it was intended to be like, oh, you can guarantee it against specific moves. I think it was intended for, oh, you got to be really precise with it. That doesn't really require much precision. You know, you just got to shield it once. Is it? Is there frames of vulnerability in it, though, that you nope. get? Nope. Nope. It is, it is the frames of... It is where normally there would be frames of vulnerability in a roll. It is, like, so if you roll too early. One? Uh, it's frame two, if I remember correctly. <laughs> that, that's a single frame of vulnerability. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, we now have, moving into game two, we're going to see the stage switch to Pokemon Stadium, which I actually really like that, because so much of the damage that had been dished out onto Jonathan in that last game was from getting juggled for forever. So just mm -hmm. having two platforms he could maybe land on, I think that's going to possibly pay the dividends. Oh, is he dead? Mm. Is that what? Oh, that's, yeah. See, that wasn't disrespect. He was purposefully unstaling his other moves. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh? Oh? Okay, no. But this is actually the first time we've seen DM down against Joshison, so it's going to be interesting to see how they play at a deficit. Because for this entire set so far, it's been them playing with a lead. And we're seeing that kind of, he's trying to go for like more low, uh, Blazing Edge, it's a projectile, but it's not that low commitment. Mm -hmm. And it seems that very consistently, DM is getting punished for going for it. Opting now to go back to the Mithra, who, you know, he's been able to get consistent damage with, but uh, he's also just a little bit lighter. I don't know if that difference in weight was an, was actually what did him in right there, but now we're seeing three stocks to one. Josh at them looking this is completely different than game one. Just yes. absolutely dominant. Mm -hmm. And that really shows like the quality of a player is both how they play when they're ahead and when they're behind. And Joshathan is very consistent with both. Also I just realized that Joshathan's in game tag is even though their opponent is playing Pyra and Joshathan's in-game tag is Pyra's ass. He's down bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for that, he says as he chases down. Oh, no. This is not looking... Oh! Whew. Oh, no. no. Oh, uh... no! Ugh. The JV3 to end that game off. Ugh. Yeah, I, I will say that it kind of felt like DM kind of lost investment near the end there. Like, mm -hmm. he wasn't going for the same, like, kind of pressure and game plan that he had been earlier. You could also chalk that up to Joshathan starting to adapt to it. But I think that how Game 3 starts is really, really going to be important. Because as you mentioned, Joshathan got the lead in that time. We, we, we got to witness what it's like when DM is trying to play from behind. Mm -hmm. And that was rough for him. So whoever takes this first stock, whoever takes an early lead in game uh, game three, that might just be the person who stands as champion at the end. Yeah. Also, I really like how in that, like how the first stock in that previous game was taken through, like just keeping the gyro at the ledge because Mithra's up B does have, sort of like with Terry's up B and Bayonetta's up B, they don't snap to ledge. So, there's a chance that your hands will get hit. 
All right, and we're seeing the swap back to Fun Destination. I definitely like this. And differently in that last than that last game, opting to start off with Mithra because he knows, at least from game one, that the juggle game is going to be so important. Oh. Oh, no. How <laughs> much damage? Yeah. That was a lot. And it even has a painful sound. Just a... Like, it sounds like you're getting shot with, like, something with some firepower behind it. Oh, that was... Ah, that was great from Josh, then, seeing that uh, DM had picked up the gyro. Oh, oh. just barely not enough. And that's and huge. That's so big, because we said before, he's now down. DM, how mm -hmm. is he actually going to man with the comeback? We haven't seen him be able to do it quite yet. I, manages to find the forward smash. Even up even. the stock count, so all right, things are not you know that dire for him just quite yet. But this damage percentage, kind of going back and forth, right? Oh. These are all so tight because if Mithra is able to get one good hit, oh, oh that was the thing. <laughs> Foresight. It's oh. frame two, because. You know, rolls are rolls are frame three normally, and foresight is the just like with uh, bats within the frame right before rolls normally start. So very strong. Oh, what a good grab right there! Sort of conditioned against that. Definitely, Justin was not expecting it. Didn't manage to get that much off of it. But, oh, this could be big. We haven't really seen a huge edge guard yet, but it doesn't quite do him in, but that's looking really Ooh. scary. All right, Josh, then actually managing to turn a ledge trap or, or an edge guard around on the end. Oh. This might be it here. Nope, Pyra's heavy enough because Pyra is six weight units heavier than Mithra. So if they had switched to Mithra there, they would have died. Speaking of switching to Mithra, opting to go Mithra right now. Switches right back, though. I think this is probably going to do it unless he manages to air dodge, and that should Ooh. be enough to take the stun. Mm -hmm. The down air just has all the hits stun in the world. That should be it. Up throw. Nope. Not going to do it. Wow, without any range on rage for Josh then. But mm -hmm. cleans up that stock. Game one felt like a blowout. Game two felt like a blowout the other way. This one, though, this is absolutely as even as you can oh. get at the moment. That was so close to being the exact same ending as the previous game there. If if DM were a little bit slower, then it would have been a kill. Oh. Ooh, and... Oh, switching to Pyra now, looking for this kill. Does he find it? That's not quite enough. I'm surprised that didn't kill, especially uh, that high up. Me too, but Rob is very heavy, very chunky. I don't know <sighs> if he's going to survive that one. I guess the far up there might have been a little bit stale. 130%, and he has to stay as Pyra. Mithra doesn't even, even at 130, doesn't have that many killing options. <gasps> oh, that might be it. It is goes for the up smash what a back and forth right there i thought it was over at least twice but jonathan hangs in and ends up eking out a win he's going to be moving on in the winner's bracket wow just the different exchanges going oh you're gonna down air me i see i see you go for those landing down airs oh so i'm just gonna buffer the option mm -hmm. of upbeat what was that that was I think that was, was yes, that was an no, that yes, that was the uppy. I probably I know I know everybody panics and they just want to get out as quickly as they can, but mm -hmm. just be I think you want to lock your first input in there before you start mashing. Mm hmm.